Yes, you're right. Celebrities behave like that sometimes. It's totally normal for us. Hey, you there. Come here. I didn't turn around. Obviously, Michaela couldn't be referring to me like that, right? Hello? Brunette over there. I'm talking to you. I turned around because I was the only brunette in the makeup room. Me? Yes, you. Duh. We're just three here. Who else would I be referring to? In this room, we have two stars and then you, whoever you are. So who did you think I was referring to? Uh, just shut up, okay? And don't ever take so long to respond to me again. Understood. I don't think you know. Silence. My <gasps> sister looked shocked at first. But now she just looked amused. I guess she really enjoyed seeing me get humiliated like this. What else could I expect from Lily? Now, get us a couple of cups of coffee. And a burger with no bread, cheese, or anything fattening in it. You mean a salad? Oh my god! Why can't you just be quiet for Christ's sake? Just do what you're told already. Why do you keep talking back at me? Is this how personal assistants behave? Michaela turned to Lily as Lily powdered her face for the hundredth time today. Lily, you should have her fired immediately. Lily giggled. <laughs> if I could, I would have done that a long time ago. She giggled some more. <laughs> Michaela, she's actually my... So sorry, Madame Michaela. I quickly interrupted her. Madame? Damn. Lily and Michaela asked, shocked. I will run out now and get you exactly what you need. I apologize for being bad-mouthed, and I hope you can forgive me. Lily, you don't have to explain anything to Michaela. Please be very quiet and let me do my job. Lola, you don't have to... It's fine, madame. I'll be right back. Stop calling me madame, you little... Twit! Hurry up and get out of here! I want my coffee hot and creamy! Lily looked like she was about to turn blue. Michaela, I think you may want to leave. I shot Lily a warning look. Not before I bring her order, Lily! Lily swallowed. Of course I'm not leaving without my coffee and burger, fool! Move! Michaela practically spit that her words at me. I ran to the closest cafeteria and got a very sweet and creamy coffee and a double-sized burger with lots of mayo before running back to the makeup room to hand it to Michaela. Are oh, you stupid? I said I wanted a really creamy coffee, not a really sugary one. And what the heck kind of burger is this? I don't eat bread, mayo, cheese, or chicken. What is wrong with you? Lily put her hands on her head. Oh, God. I walked as close to Michaela as possible. Actually, I didn't buy them so you could eat them. Then what did you buy it for, fool? I collected the coffee from her, then emptied it onto her head. I also started rubbing it around so it could spread all around her. I bought it so you could smell it. I rubbed and melted the cheese on her hands. Feel it. I massaged the remaining parts of the burger into her expensive star clothes and glittering skin. And have the full experience of enjoying a meal. Ah! Michaela erupted. Lily, I can't believe you will sit by and watch your personal assistant harass me like I'm what personal assistant? Lily shrugged. The only person in this room with us is my twin sister, Lola. What? Well, why didn't you tell me this before? I try to... She looks like a peasant! I know, but that peasant is about to hard kick your butt if you don't leave now. Michaela screamed as she stormed out, pieces of bread dropping from her hair as she walked. 
We both giggled once she'd exited the room. I can't stand that girl. Yeah, me neither. These moments between me and my sister were extremely rare, so I cherished them. I'll get the cleaners. Thanks. Guys, do you think the punishment I gave to Michaela was too harsh? Tell me in the comments below. Michaela wasn't actually the first one to mistake me for my sister's personal assistant. I only reacted because she was so rude about it. Lily was my twin sister, but we looked at nothing alike. She was born stunning, while I was born barely average. She excelled in the arts, and her beauty and talents were quickly recognized by outsiders. One thing led to another, and before we could comprehend exactly what was happening, our parents had signed a contract with a talent acting company. Shortly after that, Lily started appearing in movies and TV commercials, making our family status move from middle class to high class quite quickly. I had talents too, but my parents didn't care to discover or help me grow them. I didn't have Lily's face of perfection, so I was stuck being her guinea pig instead of stepping into my own limelight. As we grew up, Lily kept getting even more famous, while I was kind of left on the sideline. The majority of people didn't even know that I existed. They were always shocked to find out that Lily had a twin sister, and then very eager to see me. But once they did, they were immediately disappointed. Are you sure she's really your twin sister? What if your parents adopted her and are just lying? Some people would ask. Like and subscribe if you feel bad for me. One day, my parents called me to the living room to discuss something important. I arrived, and Lily was also there, waiting for me. We have great news! An opportunity has opened up for you like never before! What's that? I asked, excited. Well, an agent passed by Lily's dressing room yesterday and heard you singing. She loved your voice and discussed with Lily about hiring you immediately. But you just stepped into the bathroom at that moment. Um, okay? Why didn't you tell me this yesterday, Lola? Duh! I had to speak with mom and dad first. Why? I'm 18 already! I can make these decisions for myself! Enough! My dad interjected. We have accepted the agent's proposal, and you will start your practice sessions tomorrow. To my surprise, when we got to the studio, they hid me behind the curtains with some recording equipment whilst Lily represented me. What? I realized at this point that they wanted me to sing behind the scenes while Lily took all the glory. I couldn't believe it. So with all of Lily's fame and success, she couldn't let me have just this one thing? The one thing I had? Singing. I left the curtains immediately and approached the agent, but I heard her talking with the other staff. This Lily girl was really going to help our record label recover, right? She has the face for it. Good thing she's so good looking and already famous too. It will reduce the work required from us. After hearing this, I knew that I couldn't tell the agent the truth. So I continued with my life being Lily's guinea pig and lip syncing for her while she stole all my glory. This continued for two years and we got even more wealthy. But I was never appreciated for the money, even though my voice was the new source of our wealth, since Lily's acting and modeling career wasn't booming like before. One fateful day, Lily partnered with a beauty company to promote their products and become their brand ambassador. As usual, I was required to test the beauty company's products before Lily did, since we had the same skin type, to ensure that it'd be safe for Lily to use. I did this and started glowing two weeks into using the products, so Lily got excited and started using them, thereby stopping me from using them since she was very jealous to see me glow. Unfortunately, when Lily used them, she started breaking out on her face. At first, we all believed that the breakouts would disappear after a short while, but they didn't disappear. Instead, they intensified. Next thing, huge, irritating boils had filled Lily's face. 
We tried to use makeup to hide them, but the boils couldn't be hidden. Instead, they got worse with every layer of makeup that we applied. We tried everything, but Lily didn't get better. The dermatologist even said that it might take years for Lily's face to become pretty again. Lily began to lose endorsements since she couldn't appear at social gatherings, shows, and meetings. Our parents blamed me, saying that I set my sister up because I was jealous of her. This made me laugh because I was happy that treating me as a guinea pig or lab rat all these years had finally blown up in their faces. I didn't know what was in store for me, though. My parents were crazy people, and they were not going to lose money at any cost. So they decided to force me to do plastic surgery and become an exact replica of my sister. I refused at first, but then they threatened me with a lawsuit, saying that they were going to accuse me of working hand in hand with the beauty company to sabotage my sister's career. I pleaded and pleaded, but all my begging fell on deaf ears. They made up their minds. While consulting with the surgeon, I secretly asked him if there was a way to make this procedure temporary. He said there was, but that not everything would be temporary, though. He could get the face to melt off after a couple of years, but my nose and cheekbones would be permanently changed unless I decided to do another surgery to revert the procedure. I agreed. It took four months in total for my face to completely heal from the surgery, and by this time, Lily's face was completely clear. It didn't take years like the dermatologist had previously said, just months. When I confronted the dermatologist, she simply shrugged. Well, what do you want me to do? I didn't tell you to go get surgery. My parents didn't need my help anymore, so they completely ignored me, knowing that I had just been forced to do a life-altering surgery just so I could help their income grow. I was hurt and fed up. I spoke with the music agent and record label that hired my sister, thinking it was me, and they agreed to work with me and clear my name. After all, I was beautiful now. I started the best phase of my life as a musician and moved out of my parents' house, taking my whole income with me. My parents kept warning me to come back home and share my income, but I refused. When they saw that their threats were no longer working on me, they called a reporter and exposed the truth of my face to him. I was sitting in my penthouse one morning when my assistant called my attention to what was showing on TV. I couldn't believe that my parents would do such a thing. Oh my god, is this true? I burst into tears. <laughs> yes, it's true. I told my assistant about my life experience living with my parents and how they forced me to do surgery just so they didn't lose any money. I can't believe they just exposed themselves on live TV. Wait, what? They exposed themselves as the villains, she said. Don't cry, Lola. Everyone's gonna support you. Believe me. You really think so? I know so. My assistant was right. The leaked information went viral. And suddenly, the whole world was on my case. The hashtag Free Lola went viral on all social media platforms. People started sharing their own experiences living with traumatic parents and how they survived. It was so bad that people started insulting and harassing my sister and parents in public places. Some even went as far as egging their homes and cars. My parents had to come online and beg people to forgive them, but no one agreed. They all said they wanted to hear from me first, because if I didn't forgive them yet, they wouldn't forgive me either. And if I refused to stand up for myself, then they'd stand up for me. The love and support made me cry like a newborn child. I'd never experienced it from anyone in my life. I decided to grant an interview to one of the most popular talk show hosts in the country. The whole country tuned in carefully because they were very interested in what I had to say. While sitting on the chair and getting questions thrown at me from different directions about my childhood and mental state, 
I burst into tears and thought I couldn't take it anymore. But my personal assistant signaled me from a hidden area on the stage, encouraging me to go on, telling me that I could do it. I regained courage and continued talking. I told them about my life from my teen years to adulthood, how my parents always ignored me and acted like I didn't exist. I told them how I had to live in my sister's shadow all through my life even though I was just as talented. My parents hated me because I wasn't beautiful, so they just used me to test products that they thought might be harmful. I also told them about how Lily pretended to be me when the agent came to hire me and how I had been singing behind the curtains while she lip-synced and took all my glory for two long years. By the time I finished my story, including how I was forced to do surgery and later ignored when I did it, the whole crowd was in tears and people were sending me supporting messages from all around the country and world. My popularity and riches grew while my sister and parents became poor because they weren't good money managers. I helped them out with money once in a while, but I ignored them most of the time because I wasn't obligated to do anything. Two years passed quickly, and my face started melting just like the surgeon had said. I went back to him, and he fixed me up once again. Once I was healed, I looked at myself in the mirror, and Lily's face was finally gone. I was now staring back at the real Lola. The Lola I'd always been. I looked at myself, but I was different now. I had grown, and I was stronger. I was one of the most popular, richest, and award-winning musicians in the world. I was also extremely stunning with my new bone structure. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the story. Bye! <laughs> what is that? It's a miniature wedding dress. I'm going to put it on my Barbie. You're 13 years old and you still play with Barbie dolls? That doesn't look like a dress. It looks like tissue paper arranged in a strange way. Now, students, this is no way to speak to Evelyn during our sewing class. Your dress is very beautiful, dear. In fact, I think it's magical. Now, don't you worry about what the others are saying. You are talented. She shot the other students a mean look, then continued smiling at me. But it was unfortunate that she couldn't come to my rescue after school because at that time, more of my classmates followed me and asked me to show the dress to them so they could laugh. I was so upset that when I got home, I threw it in the bushes in my garden and marched up to my room. This dress would eventually change my life. And if you want to find out how, you have to keep watching. What's wrong, darling? Nothing, I said and slammed the door in my mom's face. I regretted that, of course, because she was upset with me for the rest of the day. It really wasn't my day. A few months passed and I stopped being creative at school because I didn't want to be teased. Things were going smoothly and people started to treat me like I was a normal kid. Then one Saturday, I spent the entire day inside watching TV and my dad told me to go outside. For some sunshine and fresh air, you can't spend your life indoors when we have such perfect weather here. Ugh, fine, Dad. I went outside and walked around the garden. Then I noticed a cute squirrel with something in its mouth. Hey buddy, what you got there? It dropped the thing and ran up a tree. I picked the thing up and gasped. It was my miniature wedding dress. Surprisingly, it still looked the same way it did when I threw it into the bushes. What was that squirrel doing with it? I looked at it and smiled. It really wasn't bad at all. My classmates were probably just being mean for no reason. I took the dress inside and put it on my dressing table. Then I went back to watch TV. When I went back to my room to get ready for bed that night, I looked at my dressing table and screamed. My doll was standing on it, wearing the dress. My mom ran to my room to see what was wrong. Mom, did you put the dress on the doll? No, wow, that's a pretty dress. Did you make it? Yes. It's lovely. Well, don't worry. Maybe your little brother just decided to play a prank. Or maybe he likes dolls now. Who knows? She rolled her eyes and left the room. Later I asked him, but he insisted that he had nothing to do with it. I thought he was still lying. I tried not to think about it too much until the next day. When I woke up, it was the first thing I saw, and I went over to pick it up. I turned the doll round and round and thought that the dress looked quite pretty. Then I noticed something strange. 
a little piece of paper was sticking out from the bottom. I pulled it out and realized that it was a note. I opened it, and it read, This is a magical wedding dress. Write the name of the person you want to marry and stick it on me. Could my brother be playing another prank? But he couldn't write that well yet. I decided to give it a shot anyway. I wrote Chad's name and stuck it on the dress. Then I hid the doll under my bed. The next day, I went to school and forgot about everything that happened the day before. In the middle of Spanish class, our teacher walked out of the class to go to the bathroom, and Chad walked up to me looking a bit nervous. Would you have lunch with me today? Okay. The other girls in my class looked confused. Chad was the cutest guy at our school, and he only hung out with the really popular kids. Anyway, lunch was awesome, and Chad asked me to be his girlfriend. I said yes, of course, even though we hadn't taken much time to get to know each other. But we were 13, and that's how things work when you're that age. It only hit me while I was walking home from school that afternoon. Oh my gosh, the dress! It really works! So, long story short, Chad and I stayed together until our third year in high school. He was head over heels for me, but eventually I got bored with him and I wanted a new adventure. I had my eyes on the lab technician at school. Yeah, I knew he was a bit older than I was. He'd just left college that year, but I decided it was worth a try. I wrote his name under my magic wedding dress and waited to see what would happen. I wondered whether I had just been hallucinating as a child or if I got lucky or something. But if I could make this gorgeous guy fall for me, it meant that my dress was definitely magical. Would you believe that not even five minutes passed when I noticed that someone new added me on Snapchat? Hey, beautiful. I know you from school, but I'm not a student. I just wanted you to know that I think you're the most amazing human being I've ever encountered in my life. I replied instantly, and I felt amazing. I didn't have to do any work to make anyone fall for me. After a few weeks of avoiding him, but using his obsession to feel better about myself, I decided to try to date the school heartbreaker. His name was Michael, and next to the lab tech, he was the second most gorgeous guy at our school. But he was around my age, so I guess that was safer, right? Michael was a womanizing jerk, though. And because he knew he could get any girl he wanted, he'd date someone for a while, then move on to the next. I wanted to teach him a lesson and maybe break his heart, too. So I wrote his name under my wedding dress and waited. At school the next day, Michael came up to me at lunchtime. Evelyn, will you marry me? What? I nearly choked on my sandwich. Uh, oops, that's not what I meant to say. Would you like to go out with me this Saturday? I'm sort of busy, but ask me again next week, okay? He walked away looking defeated. It felt so good. After I was done torturing him, I did go out with him for a few months, and everyone was shocked that he was so faithful. He didn't make moves on any other girls, and all he could talk about was me. Hey, I was thinking maybe we could apply to the same colleges so we wouldn't have to be apart from each other. He said to me one day. That made me cringe a bit. Um, Michael, I don't think this is working out, and I don't think I want to go to college. What? So there, I did it. I broke his heart. You're probably wondering why I said I didn't want to go to college. Well, if I had the power to marry anyone I wanted, I figured I could just get some celebrity to marry me, and I wouldn't have to do anything. Just sit around a mansion all day, bossing the servants around. Sounds great, huh? My parents didn't accept the news that easily, though. Not going to college? So what are you going to do for the rest of your life? Oh, you'll see. They were upset with me, but I didn't care. I had work to do. Which celebrity would I choose? I spent nights just Googling cute guys and trying to decide which one I'd be most compatible with. I settled on the hottest rapper in existence. And I won't mention his name, for privacy reasons, of course. I wrote his name under the dress, added him on Instagram, and started sending him messages, but I got no reply. After a few days, I was about to throw a fit, because what if the magic had worn off? I really didn't want to go to college. I was in my room, about to start crying, when I heard a scream downstairs. I ran down to see what was wrong. The door was open and my mom was pointing at someone outside. I walked closer, and my jaw dropped. It was him. Hey, darling. I realized you sent me a few messages, but I wanted to reply to them in person. Would you like to go out with me tonight? I booked a fancy restaurant in Italy. Italy? But how will we get there? I have a private jet, unless you don't want to go. We could do something else. I just want to get to know you better, baby. My parents were speechless and my little brother looked like he was going to faint. I could barely contain my excitement, but I had to pretend that I was calm for the sake of my new future husband. In case you're wondering what it's like dating a celebrity, it's amazing at first. 
You get to go to all kinds of expensive places. They buy you lots of stuff. You get to meet other famous people, and you don't have to do much work. I was really enjoying it at first, but then I became sad because he didn't pay much attention to me. It wasn't because he wasn't obsessed with me. It's just that he was always so busy. A few years passed and we did get married because, like I told you, there was no way I was going to college. Michael and the lab tech were heartbroken when they heard about our marriage because apparently writing a new guy's name under the dress didn't stop the previous ones from obsessing over me. But I was still sad because my husband had no time for me. And as time went by, I developed a crush on Stanley, his assistant. Stanley was always cracking jokes and asking me if I was okay. I couldn't stop thinking about him because he really made me happy. And one day, as I was about to write his name under the dress, I decided that I wanted him to fall in love with me naturally. I kept sending him little hints, and then eventually we had a conversation about it. But you're married to my boss, Evelyn. Yes, I do have feelings for you, but think about how complicated that would be. I have an idea. I told my husband that I needed help to start a fashion business in another state. He was very supportive and gave me all the money I needed to start. I had lots of customers too, because I was a celebrity's wife. Stanley quit his job and came to live with me. We are together now, and my husband has no idea. Whenever he comes to visit, I just ask Stanley to go somewhere or hide or whatever. So things did work out for me anyway. I'm rich and I'm with the love of my life. And it doesn't have to be like this forever, because if I decided I wanted to marry into the royal family tomorrow, I could. Isn't that cool? Not controlling at all. <laughs> Hi, my name is Roxy, and you might be wondering why I'm lying on the floor of the biggest hotel in Texas, the Clarion Hotel. I'm not unconscious, but I want them to believe I am. Before I tell you why, like and subscribe for more dramatic stories. You see, my mom died from a strange illness when I was just 13. The only thing she left was a tiny apartment in Texas and her ginger cat, Moose. I had never met my dad. He never loved us. That's why he left. At least, that's what my mom said. So when she died, it was just me and Moose. As tragic as it sounds, we were okay. The landlady, Mrs. Poppins, let us stay for free, but I had to leave as soon as I turned 18. I had no intention of burdening her further, so I turned to the restaurant across the street for food. My big brown puppy eyes had worked on Jim the waiter, and he would pack some food for me and Moose. Jim was in college and needed the job to pay for tuition fees. He was kind and sweet, and I vowed that one day I would repay him. Once I turned 16, Jim formally introduced me to the manager, and I began cleaning the floors in exchange for food. The manager liked the deal since he didn't have to pay me. Two years passed and my life remained pretty much the same, but one day, everything came crashing down like a pile of cards. I had taken an afternoon nap on the couch with Moose when my alarm went off. Half awake, I sat up and checked the time. It was 6.30. OMG, I yelled, waking Moose up. I was already 30 minutes late for my shift. I nearly knocked over the table in a hurry to leave. My mind raced as I hurried off to cross the street. Oh no, why did I sleep? I'll be in so much trouble. Just when I was about to cross, an old lady with hair as white as snow asked me to help her cross. I noticed that her cane was very shiny and pretty. It almost looked like gold. Even though I was late, I couldn't say no. I agreed and held on to her left hand. All the cars stopped when we started crossing. She, on the other hand, took strides as small as a toddler's, and I could swear we took 10 minutes to cross the street. She didn't let go of my hand after we had crossed. In fact, her grip became firmer. That's when she placed something in my hand. It was a ring, plain and silver, just like the ones they sold in Walmart. My child, you have a kind heart. Let me repay you for helping me today. She paused to take a deep breath. Take this ring and get married to whoever you want. I stared at the ring for a couple of seconds, and when I looked up, she was gone. The restaurant was a few meters away. I put on the ring and ran in through the back door. The manager was there, waiting for me with a stern look. Behind him was Jim. He looked very subdued. Why are you late? The manager snapped. My eyes welled up. Do you know what time it is? The yelling reminded me so much of my mom. She had always been stern with me. I've been so nice to you. Is this how you repay me? Get out and never come back. I looked up to see Jim Mouse. I'm sorry to me. 
Even if he tried, there wasn't much he could do. He was only a waiter. I went back home and cried myself to sleep. My life was over. I had no job, no way to get food, and my 18th birthday was approaching so I'd be homeless too. No, this is not how my story goes. And just like that, something snapped in me. I do whatever it takes to be rich and successful. So I got up early the next morning to look for work. That's when I saw the sign written in bold. Cleaning ladies needed at the Clarion Hotel. I wasted no time and walked as fast as I could. When I reached the entrance, I found a line that seemed to go on forever. I wasn't the only one in need of a job. At the end of the day, I got the job among 10 others. It was a big hotel after all. Finally, the sky didn't seem as dark anymore. Two weeks after I began working, I heard rumors from Janet the gardener that the CEO's son, Jake, was in town. She went on and on about how handsome he was. Can you imagine marrying him? Her words echoed in my head. If I married him, I wouldn't have to suffer anymore. I would live like a queen. But what would make a guy like him look at a girl like me? My clothes were too plain, and I had no money to buy better ones. I looked like the cleaner I was. But wait, before I go on, I have a huge announcement to make. Storytime Animated is doing a massive giveaway for our awesome viewers. This week, we'll be giving away, drum roll please, an Apple laptop. If you want a chance at winning, you must be subscribed to the channel, like this video, and share this video with three friends. Then, lastly, leave a comment below on how long have you been watching us? That's all. Check the description for more information. And now, back to the story. Suddenly, I remembered the old lady's ring. I had gotten so used to it that I barely noticed it anymore. Could it be what I needed? When I woke up the next day, I did what I had never done before. Makeup. Well, that's if lipstick counts. It was my mother's, and I had been saving it for a special occasion. One look in the mirror and I was set. Sure, there wasn't much difference, but I looked prettier. I walked to work and just when I was about to get the cleaning supplies, a car pulled up. It was the latest Mercedes in matte black. I had never seen one of those before. The driver stepped out to open the back door and a young man came out. He was wearing a navy blue suit and black sunglasses. He looked more like a movie star than the son of a CEO. I almost drooled at the sight of him. That's when I realized he was walking towards me. I froze and did the first thing that came into my head. I fell and fainted. So there I was, lying on the floor, unconscious. I heard footsteps around me and the sweet smell of cologne. My prince had come to take me. I peeked through my eye and saw that it was him. He looked even better up close. Um, is she okay? I could only make out the silhouette of a man next to him. I am now, I replied in my head, trying hard not to smile. Make sure she's all right. He was leaving. I had to act quick. I jolted up and grabbed his hand before he left. Wait! Suddenly, he turned like he was seeing me for the first time. And before I could say anything, he got on one knee. I pinched myself because how was this happening? Just then, I saw the ring glow. It had turned from silver to gold. I was beyond myself when Jake announced that I was now his fiance. I went to his office with him, and he poured me a cup of coffee, right before he excused himself. He had a few matters to attend to. Word got out quickly, and before I could finish my first ever cappuccino, there was a loud knock on the door. I put my coffee down and opened it. At the other side of the door stood a blonde woman in the highest heels I've ever seen. Her makeup was fully done, and her dress looked like it came from the little girl section. Before I could take her in, I was met with a hot slap that sent me stumbling back. For a few seconds, all I saw were stars. How dare you try and steal my boyfriend? Of course he had a girlfriend. Why didn't I think of that? But she was too late. I had already won the war. I'm sorry, who are you again? I asked, feigning ignorance. I wasn't going to let anyone take this from me. I'm his girlfriend. Was his girlfriend? Honey, I'm his fiance, and if you don't leave on your own, I'll have to call security. She couldn't tell, but I was trembling inside. The slap had caught me off guard, but I was a good actress. All those hours I had spent watching soap operas with mom were paying off. In a fit of rage, she turned and left. Had she stayed any longer, she might have seen through my brave facade. Jake could do better than that. Maybe I had done him a favor after all. After a few days, Jake bought me the latest iPhone and a mansion with an indoor pool. 
I was over the moon. But soon enough, the excitement wore out. I had everything I had ever wanted, but I wasn't happy. I felt sorry for lying to him, but I promised myself to make up for it by being a good wife to him. And maybe we would grow to truly love each other. Jake called in that evening and asked me to get dressed. He said he would send an evening dress my way and pick me up in an hour's time. True to his word, the dress came 30 minutes after the call. It was a long black Louis Vuitton dress with a bare back, similar to the ones worn on the red carpet. If someone had flashed the dress before me a month ago, I would probably have traded it for a kidney. But now I dreaded looking at it. This wasn't right. I made up my mind to come clean during dinner. Only then would I have peace. I took a quick bath, put on the dress, and put my hair in a bun. My breath caught when I looked in the mirror. I looked just like my mom. Luckily, Jake arrived just in time and I held back the tears that were threatening to fall. We drove for 10 minutes, and not surprisingly, we stopped at the Clarion Hotel. It was the best, after all. The hotel had been decorated in purple and pink balloons. I had a feeling it was Jake's doing that only made me feel more guilty. Our table was set next to the window, and the view from the third floor was breathtaking. As soon as we sat down, I turned to face him. Jake, I, um, I have to tell you something. Before I could continue, I was interrupted by a strange man. I had seen him on the way in, and he just kept staring at me. Maggie, is that you? The closer he came, the more uncomfortable I felt. Why had he called me my mom's name? Jake turned his head and smiled acknowledgingly. Hey dad, this is Roxy, the girl I told you about. Roxy, do you know anyone called Margaret? Why are you asking about my mother? Who are you? My voice trembled under my breath. I'm Ray, and I think I'm your father. My world stood still for a moment, then shattered like glass. No, no, no. There is no stopping the tears from falling. I have no father. I yelled as I ran out. I had to leave immediately. I could barely see. My eyes were stinging with tears. Roxy, wait! Ray ran after me. Let me explain myself. I shrugged, giving him the go-ahead. We spent the next hour on the pavement as I listened to his side of the story. Mom had never told him of my existence. They had split up before I was born. It hurt that Mom had lied about him, but a big part of me was relieved that I hadn't been abandoned. He continued telling me how shocked he was when he'd seen me. He thought I was my mother. I told him what happened to her, and we hugged it out. Ray talked about how he moved overseas after the breakup, and that's where he adopted Jake the same year. When I looked into his eyes, I knew he was telling the truth. They were the same chocolate brown as mine. We really were family. So Jake is my half-brother now, huh? I said awkwardly. I guess so. He replied, scratching his head. Don't worry, Dad. Um, sir, it's nothing. I reassured him. I took off the ring and just like that, the spell was broken. You can call me Dad, if you want. Okay, Dad. I replied as we hugged once more. The ring hadn't brought me Prince Charming, but it had brought me my dad. And for me, that was enough. <laughs>